Hello everyone, and welcome back to the B12 13 universe. I'm your host, Jitch, and you're watching ECW. Tensai, the first one out here tonight. He is set to go one on one with Gangrel to kick things off here tonight on ECW. In our main event, we've got Mark Henry and Daniel Bryan facing off in a number one contenders match for the ECW World Heavyweight Championship. Will it be Mark Henry or Daniel Bryan that faces Mankind for the ECW Championship in two weeks' time here on ECW? That is the question. Here tonight, though, Tensai looking to make a better impression after he was unable to capture the ECW World Television Championship last week when it was debuted, Ken Shamrock, the brand new champion, will defend against the man who met him at the end of the match. Both two, I think, really impressed in the matchup. So to see the two face off here tonight, Ken Shamrock, and I'm talking about Kofi Kingston, I think it's going to be an interesting one. We've got the ECW World Tag Team Championship Tournament continuing later on tonight. It's a very stacked episode of ECW once again. But Tensai and Gangrel, two people who debuted in that battle royal last week. Very interesting seeing what happens when these two go one on one. I think they were both eliminated by Shamrock. Gangrel uh, comes here to ECW with this this glass of blood in his hands, spits it all over the place. I'm not sure of the health behind that. I want to say a big thank you um, I want to say a big thank you to uh, everyone who enjoyed uh, I want to give a big thank you to everyone who enjoyed um, W12 Wrestlemania 2 uh, that has just gone up yesterday, this is the day I'm recording this, if you wanted to once again get an insight in how far ahead I am. Um, so, I want to give a big thanks to everyone who enjoyed Wrestlemania. I put a lot of time, effort, and work, and it seems like only one person decided to skip through and tell everyone the results. Whereas everybody... Uh, do I want to play this game, Grail? Well, the game is, that's twice I've randomized and it's told me that I do, so I guess I do. I'm trying to make uh, a point of playing the, the, the characters more. Because the AI can be a little silly in this game. It's not like WB12 stupid, like they'll hit a finisher and go for the pin 9 times out of 10, unless they feel like going for an OMG moment. But the thing is, because they introduced, oh, nice reversal, because they introduced OMG moments, um... That that did kind of mess things up a little bit. Whilst Raw is on the road to over the limit in uh, just over two months, ECW will have its first ever solo branded pay per view, which will be Judgment Day. It'll be very interesting to see who's the champions heading into that one, where they fit into the show. Not really sure what to do about the Hardcore Championship right now. I've been thinking about that a little bit. I don't I don't really have an idea. For, for that, as obviously you guys can't vote because of the delay. Nicely there by Big clothesline there by Gangrel, but Tensai excellently countered that one with a, with, a, with a duck under. Sometimes that's all you need. A big cross body. <clears throat> if you could put Gangrel with anyone on the ECW roster for a brood, who would you? That's my question to the people watching this a long time from now. Uh, the roster is hopefully updated on the wiki uh, after the, the new debuts have come in. There are still some people to be revealed on the ECB roster, so I know that can make things a little bit confusing. But I think pretty much like anyone that you, you'd want to pair him with is already revealed. Not that I even have an idea who you'd pair him with. I don't really know because I, I really like the brood. Uh, entrance and stuff like I think it's a really cool concept, but the problem is I don't know who to put him with <laughs> Obviously, I know Edge and Christian 
But uh, there's a bit of an issue with that. Uh, it's called SmackDown. I randomized where um, all the new superstars went, by the way. They were not deliberately put on one brand or another. I should probably clarify that. Some of them feel like really natural fits, you know. I feel like, uh, especially in the sci-fi era of the ECW, uh, I feel like Gangrel's a natural fit. Um, Tensai, I feel like he'd belong quite well here. As, as I do Ken Shamrock. And, you know, we've had it over on Raw, too. Uh, it's just a given that, you know, you British Bulldog and Bret Hart, you know, on Raw. Uh, Brian Pillman. Wait, uh, he he'd probably fit quite well in ECW, too. Um, and I want to say SmackDown, but I can't actually remember who's debuted on SmackDown. I felt like uh, the New Age Outlaws were a bit of an odd one, but uh, Triple H is on SmackDown, so there's, there's some allegiance there. The, the, the whole DX thing can still go. Uh, when 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 the New Age Outlaws were in DX, Sean wasn't anyway. So <laughs> it kind of works. Elbow to the nose. It's like just laying in the Gangrel. There is another match I haven't announced tonight. That's the next one. I don't remember what that one is for some reason. I've remembered all of the show, which I set up like a week ago. Except for the next match, for some reason, I just don't remember what that one is. But then one's a contenders match, one's a championship match, and another one's a tournament match. I guess they were a lot more memorable than whatever's next. I think next is another debut, I want to say, but I'm not entirely sure. A lot of ECW superstars have already been debuted. <clears throat> So I got Gangrel up on the top rope, looking for a massive superplex, and he gets him. Gangrel not looking too promising right now. Tensai's just a freak of nature, though, I think, and... Okay, got... Oh, sit out. Uh, choke bomb. Is that going to be enough to put Gangrel away? No. Wow, I cannot get over how much better the kickout meters are in this game compared to the last. That's not really a very good reversal, Tensai. <coughs> I don't know why it's lagging so much. I didn't really deal with lag last week in this. I remember in my initial series, um... For WWE 13, I, I I didn't use Gangrel as a wrestler because I didn't know he was one. I saw his gear and I was like, oh, this guy's not a wrestler. And then I watched some Attitude Era like a couple years ago and I was like, yeah, he is a wrestler. <laughs> I kind of want to do a brood because like, I don't think Gangrel's in a single game after this. I think this is it for him. But I honestly wouldn't know who to put him with. I feel like I gotta do that one quick if I want it to last. Gangrel lifting Impaler DDT. Devastating impact on Tensai. Is that gonna be enough? No. No, it is not. Tensai seems to be in some serious trouble. Gangrel has he's done the work. Is he gonna be forced to tap out though? One's gone back and forth. The crowd really come alive. Oh no! Oh, we saw this a lot in the battle royal last week. Right in the face. We don't know what's in that green mist. He's definitely got it all all over his face. Yeah. And here's the cover, and that's enough. I mean, how how do you kick out of that? You're blinded. What whatever that is, you're inhaling. It's a, that's a tough one. Tensai, I think, is going to be a very important part of ECW in the future. He doesn't quite seem to fit the general manager's style, but then I'm not really sure what the general manager's style is, if I'm completely honest with you. I'm told that uh, Mankind is not here tonight, but the general manager is. <laughs> Take from that what you will. 
really amazed by his hand. <laughs> Tensai gets the victory. I really don't remember what the next match is, I'm sorry. Ken Shamrock, by the way, more threads that I made. He was a really fun one to make superstar threads for, actually. Uh, he's got he's got cool gear. Ken Shamrock is someone I really did not appreciate when I first <coughs> played this game, but I, I definitely do now. More gears I made, by the way. <laughs> I said I wanted to point them out. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Kofi Kingston coming on down to the ring here tonight. He is set for a huge championship opportunity. Ken Shamrock's first ever de title defense. It'll be very interesting to see if Ken Shamrock didn't just kind of pull off a miracle last week by becoming the first ever ECW television champion. I'm fascinated in the idea of this matchup. These two feel like they had a great potential... Uh, last week, but we never really saw the two face off for all that long. I guess we're going to find out what's going to happen now. The Ken oh, geez, Kofi Kingston went running in there. Ken Shamrock very quick on the reversal. I don't know what was happening there. I was pressing X and just nothing was happening. <laughs> Rolls through. I saw a very vicious man in the ring last week. That sleeper hold of Shamrock's is deadly, I would say. I got the matches a little bit out of order. The match I couldn't remember was uh, our match is coming up next. Actually, it wasn't. It wasn't now. It was. It was next. And that match was uh, Sin Cara up against Eddie Guerrero. To uh, two lucha style superstars facing off one on one next. Has Sinkara turned things around? He says that a new season is the exact change he needed to turn his life around. We'll see if that's the case. It's Kofi Kingston right now getting manhandled by Ken Shamrock to start things off. Oh, geez, those eyes. Freaking nature, Ken Shamrock. One day we'll be seeing Ken Shamrock compete for the ECW World Heavyweight Championship. You'd have to think that'd be a pretty natural bit of progression there. This guy's definitely got world champion about him. Kofi Kingston. Again, very quick on the offense. That's really his style. He likes to stay in control, likes to keep things fast-paced. Up to his speed. Oh, nice drop kick by Shamrock. I didn't realize he had that in him. <coughs> Walking over the knee, Kofi Kingston. As I say, there's a lot of pressure on Kofi Kingston tonight. He is the first man to challenge Ken Shamrock for the ECW Television Championship. Now, as a reminder, the Television Championship is not defended on a weekly basis. It's not similar to the Hardcore Championship in the sense of votes. There will be standard championship matches as well, not extreme rules, um, unless of course the situation calls for it. But near enough, every time Ken Shamrock is in a match, he will be defending his championship. And I realize how that sounds, it sounds a little unusual, but that's, that's the situation at hand here. So for example, Ken Shamrock, if he's booked in a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Mankind next week, 
uh, unless otherwise stated by our ECW general manager, Dude Love, he would have to defend the ECW Television Championship. It is standard. Unless an additional stipulation is given that it is not for the championship, it is always for the championship. And uh, more importantly than that, uh, the thing that I think a lot of people don't realize is that that can include multi-man matches of Ken Shamrock. If he's in a four-way matchup and, uh, you know, there's a good chance that's going to be for the championship. And I realize now that this could get a little bit screwy. You may be th Oh my god! You may be thinking to yourself, like, well, what happens if he's in, like, a tag team matchup then? Well, that's an interesting situation that has been taken into account. If Ken Shamrock competes in a tag team matchup, unless otherwise stated, it will be for the television championship, but only in the sense of if Ken Shamrock is pinned. If Ken Shamrock picks up the victory and not his partner, it will count as a successful title defense. If Ken Shamrock is pinned or submitted, unless otherwise stated and it is not a championship match, it will, uh, it will count as a championship change. And, um, additionally, if Ken Shamrock is not the legal man in either outcome, it will not be counted as a championship change. But, also, if uh, his partner picks up the victory and not Ken Shamrock, it won't count as a successful defense either. Kobe Kingston's getting mauled in there. I've got to say, he's holding his own to an extent. I don't know how he managed to get back up after that uh, German suplex through the announce table a moment ago. But the long story short of it is the television championship is going to be on the line a lot. Anytime you see Kevin Shamrock or Kofi Kingston, whoever comes out of this one with the television championship, uh, in a matchup, unless I say this isn't a championship match, it is a championship match. He can be in a contenders match for the ECW championship and also be defending his championship at the same time. Completely possible. Now, given one one time where it definitely won't be for his championship, uh, where he could compete in a match, is the Royal Rumble matchup. Of course, we are a long way away from, I believe we're still early May at the moment. I say we, I believe, because I, I don't actually know. It's the one thing I don't know until I upload them is what the date is. <laughs> I don't look into that much. Never ever underestimate the sheer force behind this superstar's punches. Shamrock once again working over the leg of Kofi Kingston. Oh, what a painful kick. Kofi now coming off the ropes and Shamrock. Oh, no. Kofi with a brilliant reversal there. Monkey flip. Well, the second time he's pulled that off in this matchup. There's a reversal. Clearly, any time Shamrock going for a rope rebound move, that's just not paying off for him. Going for the ropes again. Oh, changes of plans. Oh boy, belly to belly. Ken Shamrock going in for the cover here on Kofi. No, not even a one count. Ken Shamrock. Is this why he's been working over the leg, locking in an ankle lock? on Kofi Kingston. We've seen a lot of targeting of the leg, but Kofi able to roll out of that one. Submission specialist Ken Shamrock, full force here. It's reminded me of uh, Cesaro in the big show last week. I thought they had an absolutely incredible matchup against each other. Kofi Kingston showing how much heart he's got. Don't forget to tweet at WWE how much you're enjoying this week's episode of ECW. I'm sure they'll understand exactly what you mean and exactly what's going on. I just realized that's in the corner, okay. <clears throat> they got rid of the WWE HD. I knew it was around this time that the social media started becoming a much bigger prevalent thing. 
suplex by Shamrock as Kofi Kingston writhing in agony on the floor. Shamrock in for the cover, and Kofi Kingston just about survives there. Kofi getting a little desperate now. Credit where due to Kofi, he's showing some real heart, but I don't know about this. This is starting to look a little downhill for him, if you ask me. A little bit more of an uphill fight, I should say. Are they going to try and force a submission at Ken Shamrock? I don't think so. This guy clearly knows a thing or two about them. Shamrock showing Kofi how it's done as he applies a submission hold of his own. And Kofi able to fight out. Another drop kick. With <laughs> a belly. And Shamrock, he, he's, he's doing that thing he does again. Oh, jeez, how many times can a man land on his neck? He is not taking a lot of damage. <laughs> and the neck breaker connects. Ooh. I like that. That was that was good. And he makes it to the ropes. Mickey Kingston set up in the corner. And Shamrock putting him up top. Is this gonna be the finishing point of this matchup? Looking for that side suplex. That's got to be enough, surely, Kofi Kingston. And there it is. Down and out. That was a good back and forth fight, but you could really see a turning point where Ken Shamrock took the reins and just full force was in control. So Ken Shamrock continues his reign as ECW World Television Champion. This is definitely going to go down as one of the most defended championships in history. But right now, Ken Shamrock has got that thing on lock as we move towards our next matchup. Sin Cara and Eddie Guerrero one-on-one. -on -one. Insistent he's going to turn his career around after what last year was like. Remaining on ECW, he's got to change something. I hope he's got rid of that lighting. I don't actually remember if it's uh, <laughs> if it's still a thing or not. Don't bother telling me. It's going to show it in a minute. <laughs> Sorry. A lot of people really like to try and show off what they know. And it's like, it's all right, man. I'm going to find out in like five minutes. Not even. Eddie Guerrero. His hair really grew <laughs> in a very short period of time. You gotta respect the hustle of Eddie Guerrero. Who doesn't love Eddie Guerrero? I mean, there are people that don't. Sorry, sorry, he's not really a big fan. <clears throat> but who doesn't love Eddie Guerrero? He's too hot for you. I had to give him this song. I know there are people out there that really, really like his Latino Heat theme. Uh, I I don't know if maybe it's just they didn't grow up with it, but I I don't I don't see the appeal. I, I don't really like it that much. This one's way better. I tried, but I was like, nah. I like this one more. 
I just, I just love how quickly this man grew his hair out, you know? <coughs> really makes him look a lot younger. So, Sin Cara and Eddie Guerrero, singles competition. Of course, Eddie, uh, his his nephew, a former tag team partner of Chavo Guerrero. Oh, Tara, oh, what did I just say? I didn't mean to say that. I meant to say a former tag team partner of Sin Cara. His, his nephew, um, C. Guerrero. That's what we'll call him, for sure. You know what? I like the way the lighting looks with these attires. <laughs> I'll forgive it. I think it's like 14 or 15. No, he's not in 15. It's like 14 or 16 where he stops with this lighting. Dude, it's not that bad. <laughs> it looks pretty horrible in um, in 12. To be honest, on this show it works anyway. Like The, the longer Sin Cara stays on ECW, the more like he's surrounded by like purple anyway, because that's the color theme of ECW. <laughs> so it, it kind of works at the moment. Eddie up on the top as he reverses. We've got some new superstars set to debut in a tag team match up next. We've been told that uh, one tag team is a pairing of superstars that were originally parts of ECW, whilst the other two that they are up against are complete mysteries to ECW, but these are the first of a few random, <coughs> randomly paired slash um, tag teams that Dude Love himself put together, so I'm very interested in finding out exactly who is in the next tag team matchup. The tournament uh, will be officially halfway through the quarterfinals after tonight, as I will then know who it is that is going to be facing off against the APA in about three weeks' time. I believe the World Ta Tag Team Championship Tournament Finals will be taking place at Judgment Day. That much has been confirmed. And it's going to be a pretty lengthy tournament. But the APA already set in the semi-finals with their victory over Team DZ. Right now, Ziggler and Brian looking at potential single success as we saw Dolph Ziggler come very close to an ECW World Championship opportunity not that long ago. And now here tonight, Daniel Bryan is being considered a top contender for Mankind's Championship. And so, uh, Daniel Bryan will be facing off against Mark Henry, another considered top contender for the ECW World Heavyweight Championship. Eddie Guerrero really impressing me right now. I still think it's criminal the way Eddie Guerrero suffered a loss to Dolph Ziggler. Oh! That's a good save there as Sin Cara was getting to his feet. I think I still think it was a, a, a damn shame that Eddie lost to Dolph and we never got to see Eddie versus Austin in a contenders match. I'm not saying Dolph wasn't good, they, they were both winning options, just I would have loved to have seen Eddie Guerrero compete for the ECW World Heavyweight Championship. I think him and Mankind could have a great matchup. Right now though, my god, Eddie is on fire. Talk about a fresh start for Sin Cara, this isn't it. I really like his gear in this one though, I'm, I'm really proud of that Sin Cara gear, I forgot I even made that. Guerrero going up top. Is this going to be the end for Sin Cara already? Guerrero has just laid waste. Got him. Got him. There's no pink on there. That's, that's a real shame. I would have thought a frog splash would have definitely had one, but I guess not. And Sin Cara kicks out. Feeling bad for Sin Cara right now. This is not the turnaround he needed. Maybe he should have been on Raw. You know, where there's a light heavyweight championship for him to compete for. I don't exactly see him beating Shamrock or Big Show anytime soon. Hey, off the ropes. Oh, nice reversal there by Sin Cara. Say a former, former best friend of the nephew of Eddie Guerrero who used to be a competitor here on ECW. Sin Cara has already dealt with one Guerrero. <clears throat> he's, he's coming back. And it looks like that one is over just as soon as it started. He 
sending Sin Cara into the ropes and a backbreaker. Fans really enjoying Eddie Guerrero's athleticism in this matchup. <clears throat> Here we go again. Oh no. Brainbuster this time. Oh, did he get the lasso in this game? Oh, okay. I guess it's old already. Locking in the lasso from El Paso on Sin Cara who is really contemplating tapping out right now. You see that arm flailing. And that's enough. Sin Cara had to tap out to the lasso from El Paso. Dead center of the ring. Nowhere he could really move or, or do anything. I guess Eddie rarely had him trapped. And I feel bad for Sin Cara in this one. He never stood a chance. That was just five minutes of Eddie Guerrero showing all his greatest hits. And I'll tell you what, Eddie Guerrero continuing to solidify his star status here in ECW. As I say, I really feel like uh, he's going to break out here. He used to be teaming with Rey Mysterio in SmackDown. We saw Rey kind of focus more on himself and his singles career. Those two no longer are pairing. I feel like now is Eddie's time to really show us what he has to offer. And I think it's going to be big. We move on now as with the ECW World, Tele World Tag Team Championship tournament continues two mystery teams against each other in this quarterfinal to see who will face the APA in a couple weeks time on ECW three weeks time on ECW Sorry for the silence, everyone. I literally heard the mailman coming as I, like, was about to start. So I just muted real quick and just left it. Anyway, David Otunga gets the first pick, it seems. And uh, apparently he knows who his tag team partner is tonight. And he's been trying to strategize with them as best as he can. It's been a real struggle, but Otunga has tried. Tried so hard. I hear there was a backstage interaction with these two after they uh, found out they were teaming up where Otunga literally swiped this sock puppet away from him, threw it away, and said, enough's enough with that, Santino. We've got to get serious. I know you can handle this. I know you're not as terrible as you make yourself out to be. Take this one seriously. We can go the distance. So David Otunga and Santino Morello, they're teaming up here tonight. They don't know who they're up against. And this is where things get real strange, because I don't know either. Here we got one of our newcomers. Wait a minute. Chainsaw Charlie, my ass! I know who that is! That's Terry Funk! That's the first ever ECW champion! Is that a... That, that can't be a real chainsaw... Jesus, Charlie! Alright, you're Chainsaw Charlie, I'm sorry. I guess he's a, a big fan of mankind and dude love. He's decided to come up with a, a, a new name for himself. I mean, Chainsaw Charlie. Chainsaw Charlie's your name. There's no further explanation. Please put that away. For the love of God. First ever ECW champion is back on ECW with a with a bag over his head. Who's his partner though? Yes. Oh come on! <laughs> How many 
outfits and names is this guy going to pull out? Definitely not the ECW World Champion Mankind, and definitely not the ECW General Manager Dude Love. It's Cactus Jack. I mean, this one is literally... <laughs> he was wearing that, that outfit with a, with a flannel over the top, like, <laughs> just a month ago here on ECW. Who does he think he's fooling? Well, one of these two teams is facing the APA. That's an that's an interesting little layout there. You got <clears throat> you got. Sorry, I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. So you got the the ECW. He could be ECW champion, ECW general manager, and ECW world tag team champion. But just with different names and outfits? I don't know how to feel about this. Santino Morella clearly not being given the go-ahead to start the match off. David Otunga wants tag team success. He was in a tag team back on Raw not that long ago. Before that tag team, of course, the Nexus with uh, Barrett and Gabriel. He's definitely had his fair share of shots as a, a tag team competitor. <coughs> Putting his uh, name into the hat once again. As he teams up with uh, Santino tonight, trying to turn a loser into a winner. And the only problem is Otunga's not exactly known for his, his win record himself. Chainsaw Charlie, aka the former ECW champion, the first ever ECW champion, Terry Funk, and his tag team partner, Cactus Jack who I want to say is the current reigning ECW champion, Mankind, or Mick Foley as we used to call him before he decided to start wearing different outfits and changing his name. Well, I, I don't know what has happened here on ECW, but he, are you telling me a majority of our roster is just going to be a world champion with different outfits and names? Blows to the back of David Otunga. Cactus Jack is laying into him. Very familiar offense. Chainsaw Charlie controlling the waist. Just, I'm just a little blown away by this whole situation. You know, it's just, it just keeps developing. This, this, this brand keeps getting stranger and stranger. And you know what's not strange is our main event, Daniel Bryan, going to be teaming up with oh, Santino. What the hell? What in the world did we just see? What? Do you do you not want to team with Otunga? What does this do? I get it. He threw away your stupid sock puppet. He was doing you a favor. That's a mistake. This is a championship match, basically. This is part of a tournament to become champion, something Santino shouldn't be anywhere near, frankly. He's never won more than one match in his entire career, which in November will be two years long. <clears throat> he didn't deserve to be in this tournament to begin with, and yet he still threw it away. Why on earth would you leave Otunga high and dry like this? This was a huge mistake. Well, it looks like uh, it's uh, pretty safe to say the APA will be meeting Chainsaw Charlie and Cactus Jack next week, unless Otunga somehow pulls off the win. Then he's got to go through a handicap match next week. I, I mean, hopefully he'd be allowed to change his partner. This just doesn't seem fair. I don't normally side with David Otunga, but this, this doesn't seem fair at all. Last week, Santino said he was going to be the, the protector of ECW and he was going to take Ryback out. 
That didn't exactly work here tonight. He got a championship opportunity he definitely did not deserve. And he threw it away. I'm speechless. Cactus Jack tearing apart the announce table. Strike from Chainsaw Charlie, Cactus Jack, and Chainsaw Charlie really feel like they're going to be a, a force to be reckoned with. Jack has got David Otunga set up on the tape. Come on now. Don't you think this guy's had a bad enough night? Gee, double arm DDT. Chainsaw Charlie, not even going to let the guy lose by count out. He picked him up and threw him back in the ring. Just let the guy take the loss, please. Thank you. What? Otunga? Oh my god. Is there more to Otunga than I thought? It's back and Otunga, oh, big back body drop. DDT, oh man, that's, that's blood. David Otunga busted open, Cactus Jack going for the cover and the sight of his own blood seems to have knocked him out. I guess we learned a little something about uh, David Otunga here tonight. Doesn't like blood. I hope we don't get any more Mick Foley's in this tournament. Cactus Jack advances in the World Tag Team Championship Tournament. So that means in three weeks time here on ECW, it will be the APA up against Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie in the semi-finals for the ECW World Tag Team Championship Tournament. Congrats to these two, a returning legend in the ring there, the first ever ECW champion, and his partner who is definitely not the current champion. So move towards our main event, Daniel Bryan and Mark Henry. You don't want to miss this one. Tonight, Daniel Bryan has been given the privilege of competing in an ECW Championship Contenders match. His partner Dolph making it into a Contenders match a few weeks back before Extreme Rules, the Season 2 finale. He was unable to defeat Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin then faced uh, Mankind last week after losing the Championship matchup. And uh, he definitely got set back a bit. Some could say D Dolph Ziggler deserves to be in this match. Maybe a little more than Daniel Bryan, but Bryan was ranked the top contender, as was this man. Oh, no more smiley, thank you. Henry says it's time to get down to business. No more smiles and bouncing around. No more trying to mess with the psyche of people. From now on, Mark Henry is just going to be a beast. He is just going to come out here, he is going to wreck havoc, and he is going to turn ECW into his very own Hall of Pain. Will this be a breakout year for Mark Henry? I mean, I'll tell you what, when he got drafted over to SmackDown and he he, he, he forced our truth into teaming with him, say what you want, Mark Henry may have never captured a single championship in 2011, sorry, 2010. But I'd still say 2010 was a big breakout year for Mark Henry. You look at his win-loss record in Season 1, and then you look at his win-loss record in Season 2. This man got serious, and it paid off spectacularly. Now he comes here to ECW, and he's immediately decided, no more crew, no more, no more allies, no more none of that. The only thing you're going to see is Mark Henry wrecking every body that gets in his way.
There we go, Daniel Bryan quickly charging in. They're going to say, I wish mankind the best of luck in a couple of weeks' time on ECW, regardless of who he faces. Neither one of these, I think, are going to be going easy on him. And, uh... I don't really have a lot more to say than that, to be honest. Because... Big shoulder tackle, sorry, my bad. Also, in two weeks' time, we'll finally see the Road Warriors here on ECW. As they'll be competing in their quarterfinal, the finals of the quarterfinals, up against a mystery tag team. We've been told that next week will be another another newbie tag team type matchup. Uh, whereas the tag team that we face in the Road Warriors will be a lot more experienced. So, similar to what we saw here tonight with uh, Santino and Otunga and Chainsaw Charlie and Cactus Jack. Uh, we had kind of these these new pairings, these first time pairings. We're going to be seeing that again next week. Some new new first time pairings up against each other, and then the Road Warriors will face a more experienced tag team. Not here in the WWE, but they have had experience in the past, and they are coming into the WWE as a tag team. So that should be a very interesting situation. Very fascinated to see who comes out on top in this one-on-one -on -one matchup. Huge implications. Dolph Ziggler has been very quiet about his feelings towards this matchup. I feel like having gotten that little bit closer, having realized his potential as a as a maybe world champion, I, I feel like maybe he's struggling to root for Daniel Bryan here tonight. As much as he maybe wants to see his best friend and partner succeed, I think a part of Dolph Ziggler is jealous that Daniel Bryan is in this contenders match and he is not. I've had a crook in my neck ever since I woke up this morning. And it really hurts. I can't actually turn my neck to the left at all. I can face left, but I can't tilt my head left. And it feels like I'm tilting my head too much to the right. I don't think I slept very well. I think I... Uh, I think I either extended my neck a little too much, or like I, 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 I laid on one side too long, or something. I don't know. I definitely didn't get enough sleep. I'm still very tired, but <clears throat> I'll make it through the day, you know. <laughs> I'll struggle and survive for you. I'm so curious to see what this new Hall of Pain, this this vicious, determined Mark Henry has in store for us. Daniel Bryan might be a very unlucky man having to go up against him. If this is 2011, you never know what's going to happen. CM Punk could leave the company. 2011 was the year that re-sparked my interest in wrestling. Vicky Guerrero was finally off the screens, mostly. Um, CM Punk finally got like a really big push. Uh, Mark Henry and Big Show had a pretty great feud, if I remember right, around this time. This was the start of Hall of Pain, 2011 was. Um, there was the whole Zack Ryder thing, which I was a sucker for. I don't really like him much these days, but at the time I thought it was really cool. Zack Ryder's one of those guys that, like, he really made you believe that there was a lot of missed potential there, that he was this incredible star that could absolutely be a top dog. But then, you kind of saw how, how he wasn't all that. And that might piss some people off for me to say, but I'm not sorry. Yes, uh, 2011 really reignited my interest in wrestling. I had been so on and off with it, and as the Ruthless Aggression era came to an end in like 2008, I remember it just really lost me for like two years. I just, I, I don't really remember a lot of 2009 and 10. I know I kept getting the games still, um, and I knew pretty much everyone in the roster. I don't think there's anyone that was a stranger to me, but like, I just, I didn't, I didn't really like. I wasn't feeling it. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I'd like see the occasional thing and I'd just kind of be like, eh, whatever. You know, they made CM Punk a monster for not drinking or doing drugs. And as someone who doesn't drink and do dr like doesn't drink and doesn't do drugs, I should say, don't say and do drugs, it makes it sound like they do. As someone that is also straight edge, 
seeing a guy be heavily vilified for that whilst also being heavily targeted and bullied for being straight edge in high school was a shitty feeling, so I really did not like that rivalry between him and Jeff Hardy. It made me very uncomfortable because it was very relevant to what was going on in my life at the time. And for some reason you were supposed to support the, the drug addict. <laughs> I don't really know why but you were supposed to. Um, and I remember that whole thing just making me really uncomfortable. Um, I don't really know a lot about Straight Edge Society CM Punk because, as I say, he was a bad guy for it. And that just made me feel like... Not, not like targeted, but just not right. <laughs> I, I don't feel like being straight edge is, is a very villainous thing. I get it, he was being obnoxious and trying to force people to live the same lifestyle. Don't get me wrong, I get it. I get it, you know. But like, it, it just, it still can make you uncomfortable. <laughs> and it did. Um, I can't remember what the fuck else happened in 2009 and 10. I don't really remember a whole lot of it. I mean, I always read up on it. I just didn't care. They started a, another Cena Orton feud in that year, if I remember right. Like they they ended them, and then they started another one. And that, that was kind of like, no, I really don't care. I remember seeing Mania 25 and thinking it was just absolute garbage. Like those those years just really didn't do it for me. And to, like. 26, I think, was a pretty good one. 27 was terrible, to be fair. Like, like <laughs> 2011 didn't entirely win me over. It started off with the Miz as W Champion, which I really like, as you guys could probably tell from watching the series. But, like, yeah. It, it was still kind of hit and miss. 2009 was the Nexus, if I'm not mistaken. No, that was 2010. Mm. Whenever the Nexus came around, that really had my interest, but they fucked it up so fast. Yeah, so that, yeah, that's kind of my review of those years. <laughs> I'll be rewatching them on the network, and they might honestly be a lot better than I remember. But I just remember really struggling to be a wrestling fan, and then 2011 coming along and just really, really lighting a fire under it. And then wrestling was like great up until like up until NXT kind of lost its way. I think around the time Dusty Rhodes passed away, and you got like the the, the big Kevin Owens push instantly. He just debuted and just won the NXT title. And they like fucking chat on Sami Zayn so hard after building him up as like the super underdog champion for like a whole year. Uh, and then from there they just kept doing big indie signing after big indie signing and it just got really boring. It was just guy, guy gets signed, guy wins NXT title, guy gets really long reign until new guys get signed and wins NXT title. And it was just like, it got really, really boring. And then there was Bobby Roode, and I, I fucking hated the glorious shit, and like... Oh god, yeah. Because NXT kind of became like my favorite part, and then it, it just like, really plummeted. But like, like, Bo Dallas, Adrian Neville, Sami Zayn, NXT is the best. And then like, you know, right after I stopped watching, like, Jinder Mahal won a WWE title. And like Brock Lesnar took the Universal title and just fucked off for a year again. It was just, it was just starting to feel very stale. It seems like it's better these days, but I still haven't watched a show in like three years. Coming on four. Daniel Bryan locking in the 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 yes lock. Is it the yes lock yet, or is it still the rebel lock? And that did nothing to Mark Henry. Anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling about those years now. I just felt like giving you guys an insight to my wrestling fandom. Part of the reason Universe died in 2017 is because I was rebranding the channel with Saria and I took all the old videos down. But another part of the reason that wrestling died in 2017 is because my interest in wrestling had died in 2017. I don't actually regret getting rid of that universe. I really thought, like, because I, I, you know, a part of me is like, ah, oh, I should have left all the old videos up. But like, the old universe, I really don't miss. I'll make references to it a lot, but like, 
retrospectively looking back at it now, I think already in the first, like, two years worth of this from, like, 11 to now, I feel like this has been way better. Way, way better. There was a lot of people I didn't use um, because I had the whole CAW thing and I remember filling my roster up with just like people that were like, you know, like to like all the TNA guys, the, like I do like, but it meant I wasn't using like the Attitude Era guys and there's some really good people there that I just totally slept on. That's just part of growing up though, isn't it? It's you, you, you begin to admit that there are better errors than just yours. <laughs> My neck is killing me. I have rambled for 11 minutes. That's how long I've not paid attention to this match and rambled. I'm sorry. I just like to talk every now and then. Kind of funny. On a, on a, on a commentary-based channel, I like to talk. Daniel Bryan has been kicking Henry's ass. I'm really disappointed in that. I wanted to see Henry just wreck havoc. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, well, strongest slam. That was abrupt. He goes in for the cover. I was going to say, he kind of left him for a little bit there. He really gave him some time to recover. <coughs> Could that be the turning point in the match for Mark Henry? Calm down, he hasn't done it yet. Spoilers. God, you're like a guy commenting the result of the main event ten minutes after it went up. Big headbutt. Oh, sorry. In the corner goes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, Henry's in the corner. Yes. Daniel Bryan, what are you doing? What is this yes thing? It's the first time I've ever seen him do this in this series. I don't know what that means. Other than just the word yes. <laughs> right in the eyes from Mark Henry. Oh, okay. Really awkward elbow there by Mark Henry too. Like an accordion? Or just end over end? Pounder! <laughs> Love the super heavy peas. Daniel Bryan. He's got a, a stretch here applied. He's still going to go to a time up. I feel like this one isn't really slowing down. Big elbow there by Daniel Bryan as he's got Mark Henry right where he wants him, but he doesn't do anything with that. And it's Mark Henry back in control. And the fans chanting for Daniel Bryan. I don't I don't know if that's gonna be able to pull through. I don't think Henry's beaten Bryan with a submission hold, I gotta say. The submission specialist Daniel Bryan. I don't think he's a submission specialist in the sense that he's really good at tapping out. These two have both exchanged this move quite a bit. I remember when this was just Batista's move. <laughs> now everyone does it. You're an all-star. Oh. Slowed over neckbreaker. Yes, yes, yes. There he goes again with that. Off the ropes, just slamming him down full force. And Mark Henry... Continues to try and turn things around. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Daniel Bryan's been busted open. Yes. <laughs> Once again. I don't know why he keeps doing that. Taking his time here. Really wants to try and force a submission out of Brian. 
screaming in his face, got his arms caught up. Ryan flipping it back, knee to the head, seen that before. Five minutes remaining on the clock. One of these two is going to face Mankind for the ECW Championship in two weeks time. Here on ECW and Daniel Bryan bleeding out all over the place now. Mark Henry, oh god, no, don't do that. Don't grind your boot on someone's bloodied face and then just stand there. Big drop kick sends Mark Henry off the corner. And it hurts inside. Off the breath. Oh. And Brian really holding his head. You can tell he's in a lot of pain. I mean, it's a lot of blood to be losing on his fresh white outfit. Is that blood or the design in his trunks now? I'm not too sure. It was always there, but I have to ask that question because apparently I'm Bobby Heenan. Here's the cover. That's a quick kick out. Look at the blood on the mat. Ooh. Was that introduced in this game? I don't remember that in the last one, but it might have just been because people didn't get busted open as often. Big headbutt. <clears throat> Mark Henry's incredible strength on display. Three and a half minutes left on this contenders matchup. I don't know what happens if we get a draw. But that's okay because Mark Henry picks up the victory with just three and a half minutes left on the clock. Credit where dude Daniel Bryan a great showing. But I wish mankind the best of luck next week. Not next week, in two weeks time. That guy is going to need to be at his best. Mark Henry says that this is a new Mark Henry bent on destruction. And Daniel Bryan has just been inducted into the Hall of Pain. Will Mark Henry be victorious? Will Mark Henry be ECW champion in two weeks? That is for us to find out. But next week, the World Tag Team Championship Tournament continues. I can't wait to see that. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on SmackDown.